with the iOS 18, which is right now at the developer beta, uh, Apple did a complete revamp on the user interface of the calendar application. This turned a complete miserable application to something which is much more usable now. I was running a test for the past weeks on this application to see if it can replace the main calendar which I'm using constantly, which is fantastical, and I'm paying a hefty price uh, for subscription. So in this comparison, I'm going to put a head-to-head -head these two applications together and compare the features, what did uh, change with the calendar app, and how is it comparing now to the fantastical. Let's figure it out. All right, let's open the calendar app and see what has changed. Uh, when I open the calendar application, uh, I see this view up here, which basically shows another view added to, to this view, which is multi-day. Multi-day shows you today and tomorrow in a two-column fashion. Um, there's a slider up here if I want to jump through time and make this uh, navigation a little bit quicker. But uh, this is new right now um, and it's quite useful if you want to use the maximize the usage of the screen. I should be able also to expand and collapse these events and the slide from the bottom of here going back to today of course will uh, move you back to today if you rotate the screen it shows you a week uh, which basically i'm showing you later but what else was changed in the overall view is the month view right now if i go here i should see from the same view that i have detailed which shows me uh, a little bit more detail on the monthly basis. And if I expand that, look how useful it is now. So it shows me almost in a weekly fashion uh, what's going on in a month. Uh, and I can collapse it again to show compact and absolute compact, which is uh, this one, uh, which doesn't show you much, but yeah, it shows you what you have in your days upcoming, how busy your days are. Uh, other than that, I don't see much usage for this. Stacked a little bit more and detailed view. And you can, again, expand more to see your weeks in a month. Uh, going back, you will see years. And what else? Today, if you tap today again, you will jump to month. Today again, you will jump to uh, multi-day or if you set it to daily only single day then it will show you the single day uh, inbox shows you your invitations uh, what you received declined or accepted uh, beside that the ad app ad view uh, they added reminders right now which shows uh, reminders on your current day there is no way to, to see the list of reminders like you see in other applications like fantastical but this is also useful to see your reminders in a day, uh, in your day now. So these are the reminders that I created. Uh, but if I see in a better way, if I see the complete management of the reminders, I can go back to my reminder application. Other than that, reminders also shown on your uh, calendar, which means that anytime you create a reminder, you can do some management on it. You can actually directly create your reminders here uh, on your calendar and then uh, manage it by sliding and moving it here and there. So this is the view, uh, what you see in a uh, new calendar application, the new refactor, I mean. And let's take a look at Fantastical now. Fantastical, uh, once you open it, it, they show you the famous day ticker, which is the slide on top of the screen. You can slide it both way. I can slide my events and this, uh, these are how, somehow connected, both move together. If I tap on my date, I, will show, I should go to my to do it today. Uh, they, these are the list of the views they provide. So I have task, I have day ticker calendar, which is the expanded view of the day ticker. And if I slide one more down, I should see the quarter or whatever view that I preset for this slide down. So, which means that if I set it to week, then I should, when I uh, slide down from calendar view, I will see my week view. And if I set this to day view, then when I slide down from a uh, month, I should be able to see the day view. 
beside that, Fantastico has Quarter, which I barely use it. I don't know what is it even used for. And year. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of UI. Now let's check the rotated screen, see calendar first. So if I rotate my screen, I should be able to see four different views up here, year view, month, week, and day. So there are additional views that pop in, slide in, uh, which is calendar and also the events that is showing up here. Uh, add button is here, inbox also. In terms of information, uh, I believe this day and week in the landscape view are the most useful ones, which I can see a full schedule of my events ahead. Uh, and I can expand and collapse it also in a day view as well. So it shows me in a multi-day fashion. I should be able to see what I have on the right hand side. So this is the upcoming meeting that I have. And if I tap on any event here, I should see some details on the right hand side. Uh, this I would say pretty much improved in, in terms of user interface and this is now completely usable. Let's take a look at Fantastical. And as you can see, Fantastical uh, has pretty much a fixed view on the left hand side is your events and again it slides as you uh, move up and down so if i tap on a, the day here i should yeah i should jump into today uh, if i i think it was a slide yeah if i slide here i should see the full view of the day i have the ability to collapse and expand it uh, I can see that these two applications are getting very close now, head to head. Um, and of course, I can see much more information if I slide and sliding back my events, I should be able to see the list of events back here. In terms of uh, themes and icons, um, right now, Apple allow you to change the icon color. That's uh, somehow you can customize the color of your icon and of course calendar app also changes with them because this is their uh, native application uh, they provided the dark color as well as the light color now uh, in fantastico however uh, you have the same theme style you have dark appearance you have dark and light but uh, you can do it in their classic way which is basically half of half of the screen is light color and half of it is dark and if i pull down here then it shows me the light color if i go back for example to month view now it's light color in terms of icons fantastical gives you additional icons which one of them is dark and the rest of them are their uh, legacy and the new ones in terms of integration calendar app is pretty solid uh, it provides you all the major players on the market, iCloud, Microsoft Exchange, if you have a work account, for example, Google, Yahoo, AOL, Outlook, and additional that you can configure the server manually. On the other hand, Fantastical gives you some additional integrations. So if I go to accounts, now let's take a look at the event and reminder creation and compare it compare these two applications together. Uh, as for calendar, you will get some basic uh, natural language processing, which you get a much more sophisticated one in uh, Todoist. For example, if I said uh, meet Alex tomorrow at 10 a.m., it should detect uh, from 10 to 10.30, as you can see, suggestion. Uh, but the only thing that can do is, I think, uh, scheduling the event. But if I want to, for example, make it a little bit more complicated, like adding a recurring to it, then it wouldn't be able to capture it. So repeat for me is always manual. So let's take a look at the reminder now. For the reminder, it uses the traditional natural language processing, which was existing in reminder application and is a bit different 
from calendar. I think they haven't unified it yet, but I think this is something they should do in the future. For example, if I say meet Alex tomorrow at 10 a.m., this is the difference uh, with the event. As you can see, it highlights the event. And if I tap here, then it should add the schedule today. Uh, but it doesn't work with a different keyboard. For example, I use Swift key from Microsoft. And if I do the same uh, here in Reminder, meet Alex tomorrow at 10 a.m. I see the highlight, but I can't do anything about it unless I go back to the Apple uh, original keyboard. Then I see the suggestion here to schedule my day with it. This is not something that I get with event because event shows me uh, the suggestion here. And if I tap on it, then it will schedule it. And with the event, uh, I as well get the daily schedule, for example. But with the, sorry, with the reminder, I get that. With the event, I don't get it. Now let's check the Fantastico. Fantastico is a little bit more sophisticated and is more mature. Meet Alex tomorrow at 10 a.m. to 10 30. This is something that I have with Fantastico and I don't have it with Calendar yet. So I can give the duration and I can set the recurring. As you can see, there is a tiny recurring button here. And if I go back to, uh, sorry, go down to my uh, advanced settings, I should see the repeat is set to every day for me here. Uh, let's cancel it and Check the reminder here. The reminder is also follows the same pattern. Meet Alex tomorrow at 10 a.m. Daily. And as you can see, it identifies the daily pattern and it adds it for me. All right, next we're gonna take a look at how we can manage the events by moving them around via gestures and drag and drop. So in calendar, now they provide uh, basically a way to move the things around by holding, tap and hold on any events and drag them and drop them somewhere in different views. Uh, this is feasible, of course, in multi-day, much easier if you want to, for example, grab an event using one finger. So, and using the other finger to scroll to throughout the days, forward and backward, anywhere and just drop it in the time frame that you want. Uh, another way, another thing you need to see is basically gives you two handle now and you can move them up and down and reschedule, uh, I mean, change the duration of your event. This is also possible with the uh, reminders, of course, not the duration, but uh, with the location of it on the time frame. As you can see, I can drag and drop it anywhere in the schedules. In Fantastico, it is achievable in week view. Uh, if you can drag in one event, uh, you can drop it anywhere in the week and using, again, holding one finger, uh, holding the event and another finger scrolling through the days, you can give yourself some flexibility of drag and dropping an event anywhere in your schedule. One thing that I was hoping to see in this update is the ability to changing the color of the events. Uh, this is not still possible in Apple Calendar, regardless of the calendar you're subscribed to, whether it's iCloud Calendar or Google Calendar, it is still not feasible. But this is something that is feasible in Fantastical. For example, I can uh, tap on any events and change the color of it. Uh, it won't affect other calendars is only something that you will see in the Fantastical, but this is a good way to color code your events. Next thing, which is also very important for me is widgets. Uh, let's do a comparison because uh, I'm using widgets quite often to see what's coming in my day. Uh, as you can see, they revamped the widgets a little bit. The UI is much better, much prettier now. Um, these are the small ones and these are the calendar app. And on the, I get pretty much the basic functionality. If I tap on the day, I will jump into the calendar today. And if I tap on any event, 
I should be able to see the event itself. And beside that, I don't see an add functionality here. Uh, let's take a look at, and with Fantastico, I am seeing the, the calendar itself. It's a little bit more intuitive. Uh, I can tap here to jump into different month, uh, tap on each individual days to see uh, the events for those days. There's an add button here, which I can add event or reminder. Uh, and uh, in terms of UI, it's a little bit prettier, yeah, I would say. Uh, I see the join button also directly here in my events that I can, that I that is set for Google Meet. So to sum it up, Apple did great to revamp this calendar because the user interface was miserable and uh, it was unusable. That's why a lot of people were looking for third-party applications. I will continue using it and I, if I, I'm planning to run another comparison on the desktop applications to see if it's completely replaceable. But until then, I will keep using it. And I hope you do too. So give it a try and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, give a thumbs up to the video if it helped you in any way. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.